Hi and welcome to this video on first impressions of Ignition Simulator which is the newest version of Gazebo. We'll talk about it later and then I'll show you how to install it in the system and some examples of the basic elements that I see interesting. So let's get to it. Everything that I'm going to show you here it will be in this git in this notebook so we'll follow this notebook that I've done which is basically um, a recollection of all the instructions of the official documentation in a single place. So first things first what is it? What is it? Ignition Simulator. So Ignition is a collection of libraries and that what it is basically is the newest version of Gazebo. Gazebo was very old and they, they are, they've made Ignition Simulator so that in, in the close future, I suppose, it will replace Gazebo. It has better practices, it's more modern and has really nice features that are really important in today's ro robotics. So let's go. So the first thing is the versions. As always, it's the naming by A, B, C. So in this case, the first long-term support one is Citadel, which is the one that we are going to install here. If you're starting, I would recommend you to just install Citadel and start from there. So you have some tutorials and we're going to go over the, the most important elements. So the most important elements or features that I see that are really important in Ignition is levels, distributed simulation, and then the rendering engine, which it's designed to use better rendering engines, which it's, it's a relief because Gazebo was getting old in, in that matter. So we you maybe can integrate it with an other rendering engines like uh, Vulkan or NVIDIA rendering engines and so on. So good to know. So let's go. So first things first, how do we install it? So I have prepared for you this, this tiny script. I've already done it in my system. I made just a Docker image. So I have it already running and inside. So if you want to know if it's working, one of the first things you can do is execute some examples that by default uh, Ignition installs for you. For example, uh, let's start this one, which is, it's a personal favorite because this was really difficult to have it working on Gazebo for a very long time. So there we go. So as you see, the, the HUD, it's totally changed, which also it's good because it's more simplified. And hit play. The first thing I noticed when I first tried this and I was preparing this video is that it's more snappy. It's snappier than gazebo, the traditional gazebo. It goes faster and it feels more fluid. So good job there. And as you can see, this is really useful for people tracking, people detection, people following. It's, it's really impor important to have this feature there. Yeah. So very simple, but good, good, very good. Okay, let's launch another one. Um, this one was also one interesting one because uh, you have wind simulation, which people that do drones and so on, it's absolutely necessary to simulate this. And it seems that it's quite well simulated or at least better than normally. Yeah. So there you go. With the wind, it starts to go up. Yeah, great. And let's do Let's do this one, for example, which we can see how physics works in the system. As you can see, the simulations start really, really fast. So that's nice. 
There we go. So we have depth sensors and RGB cameras, so nice. And as you can see, it's, it's, it feels cleaner. Okay, so, okay, this is good and dandy, but what we want to know if it has new features that, um, that make the change to ignition simulator worth it from Gazebo, that standard Gazebo 9. So one of them, which impressed me quite a lot, was the use of levels. So let me launch the simulation, the simulation here. There you go. So as you can see, we have two robots here, uh, differential drive classical ones, and uh, we have a map. This map, it's different from any one that you've used in Gazebo. And the reason is because uh, it's divided into levels. So let me show you uh, real quick the documentation that explains a bit levels. I, I won't go into details, but the essence of it is that we are dividing the space, the world, into zones, into levels. Each level has uh, its zone here and then its buffer. And as you can see, for example, in this, in this example, you see that we have level one, two and three and they intersect and they share some buffer. So they didn't draw the, the buffer for just to be, make it a bit clearer. But level two has also one and level three has. So how does this work? So basically we have our robot and moves to level one to level three. So when it comes into the buffer of level one and level three, it will start to open the elements and load the elements from level three. While it's in level one, these elements, they won't be in the scene. This makes simulations much faster and it allows very big simulations. So let's have a look. Um, so in this demo we have we can publish these topics here. So let me just publish these topics one and two. Okay, and then we hit play. There you go. So you'll see that the blue one goes faster and it starts to load the map, the elements of the levels. And you see that this one now loaded this element because it got inside the level of these element, of this element. And this, this which seems quite obvious in video game industry, in simulations, it wasn't, it, it's not very common to have this. So this allows you to create huge, I mean, huge simulations, cities, if you want. And you, you can have multiple robots around moving in different spaces and you don't have to load all the space at the same time. There you go. So now we lost the pieces that we don't need. And this is internally by, made by Gazebo. Uh, ignition, sorry. This is from version, I think, I believe 2.10 had this version. I'm not sure already this feature, but there you go. And I suppose that when it falls at the end, we'll lose this level just because it makes no sense to have it there. There you go. So this is really important and one of the features that caught my eye. Yeah, and then there's another feature which I couldn't make it work for some reason uh, in Citadel. Uh, if you know how to do it, please leave it in the comments below, which is the distributed simulation. This to distribute the system in a way that you can execute the simulation, the same simulation in different systems and distribute it. So you can distribute the load. So this is amazing. This is amazing. And really good job there. 
So if I, I would like to see the demo, actually. Okay, and then finally, obviously, we need to talk about ROS1 and ROS2 integration. So they made a really good job on integrating it with uh, ROS. Uh, you have this Git here, which we have for uh, dashing or for melodic. I'll talk about ROS1, so ROS Melodic, but the same applies for ROS2, actually. And the reason why it's, it seems that it's so simple, it's because now uh, Ignition, it's using um, the transport messages inside it to then make a conversion with uh, the ROS Ignition bridge to ROS messages. It, it's not publishing with plugins inside Gazebo directly to ROS, but it's doing this conversion. So, in theory, it should be more robust. It's separated totally from ROS. So, good there. And they made a really good job. So, let's have a look at the examples. So, we go here. Uh, sorry. There you go. And let's launch, for example... Uh, I want to execute all of them. Let's do, for example, our friend, the differential drive. Our nice differential drive. There you go. So we're launching differential drive here. And if we do ROS topic list, we can see that... Mm, Someone is listening. Let's see, Ross topic info, uh, the blue one, for example. So there we go. We have publishers and subscribers. So let's have a look. How can we um, publish here? Mm, there we go. So now we're going to publish. We're not using this commands that we used before which are ignition commands, but these are ROS commands. So let's publish this. Um, I'm not sure if I, yeah, there we go. So the blue goes. There we go, fantastic. And we can see in our viz that we are also publishing the odometry. There you go. So it's totally integrated with ROS. So it's it makes me really, really happy. Because it's it's a no-brainer that you need your simulators, your robotic simulators to be integrated with ROS. Otherwise you lose a lot of uh, power there. Yeah, so let's try something else like um, apt if we can make it work. So now we do ROS run to this keyboard and then we do CMD val and we remap it to our friend here. Um, we're publishing for the, the blue one. So let's do the green one. Uh, green, green, there you go, green. Okay. So let's have a look. There you go. So I'm controlling it with the keyboard without any issue whatsoever. So really, really nice there. <laughs> there we go. Great, fantastic. Amazing. There we go. Okay. Let's have a look at some of them. Uh, one that it was interesting, obviously, was the RGBD camera, which is not obvious to make it work. So let's test if it works. There you go. So we have the scene, the, the one that I showed before. And here we can see, there you go, a point cloud 
two working perfectly. Fantastic. There we go. Uh, let me just close it here. And finally, for example, it has a system to spawn elements inside, which it's obviously really important to be able to load a world and then spawn elements at your will. So there you go. Fantastic. Great. And that's, that's quite it. So they have implemented loads of, of elements. So for example, let's do this last one, which is the GPU uh, LiDAR bridge. There you go. So we have this simulation and there's a lighter here and we have lighter information here. So perfect. I mean, good things about um, Ignition Simulator. Obviously, it's it feels faster. It feels snappier. And with the distributed feature and the levels feature, it's more than enough to justify changing. The only thing is that, well, uh, it's, it seems that there's some issues and it's maybe not totally finished in there, but at least for the functionalities that we had in the old gazebo. But I mean, from my point of view, this is more than enough. The only thing that you need is launching simulations and you really don't need all those features of moving around and putting stuff inside. It's more than enough to have this and the features justify it, absolutely. So that's my personal opinion. Uh, please leave your opinion in the comments below. I would love to know it. Uh, did you like what you saw? Are, aren't you convinced? Something that I didn't talk about? Please leave it in the comments. Have a look at the podcast with uh, Luis Poubel because she is one of the lead uh, programmers in this and she explains a lot of details, the philosophy be behind it and so on. So I highly recommend you that you have a look at it. And if you want to learn ROS, Gazebo and anything ROS related, please go to robertignatacademy.com where you can learn loads of stuff about ROS and gazebo and robotics in general. So thanks for watching and see you in the next time.